all love to follow our favorite Instagram, Pinterest, house, inspirational accounts for our own home decorating. I have an amazing designer here with me today, Tracy Jones, who's going to talk to us about just that. Tracy, how do you get such an amazing aesthetics on your Instagram account? Well, the only thing I can say for me personally is uh, light, bright, and airy. Uh, natural light is my favorite thing and my best friend. So for me, um, that is what fills me with joy is having light and fresh and airy aesthetic. And it really is a form of artwork. I mean, you have the creativity and that element to share with all your followers because you're a designer and you want to inspire. And and that's what it is. And first and foremost with Instagram, um, Mine is inspiration over influence. I'm, I'm not, I didn't begin the Instagram journey for influence. Um, I love pretty pictures of homes. I love pretty pictures of everything, but I love looking at good design and that's what inspires me. So I hope that if there's anything out there that I can inspire somebody else with my aesthetic, because this is my home that I'm mm -hmm. sharing, but I also share some, some of my projects, but for me, um, inspiring somebody else that might want to try to bring in some light and bright into their world. And in your everyday off of Instagram, you're a designer doing um, interior design, staging, your own projects. How did you get into that? So I'm a, a twist and turn, uh, pivot, adjust. Um, so I was actually a police officer in Vancouver for 10 years. Uh, when we were living there, uh, had our two daughters. Um, I got married, went into policing um, because I needed a job out of university. So I have a phys ed degree. Uh, again, complete 180 from this. But what it was, um, what, policing was great and I loved it. Um, but then we were moving to Victoria. I was home. I've always been um, fully into design and styling spaces and very aware of my um, space planning and color. So at that point, I, um, I thought, okay, I'm going to take a, a step and go something completely different back to school, get some uh, courses under my belt with design and start into more of the staging idea of things. As that's evolved, I've really gotten um, out of the staging and into more of the design and styling end. So I love the end design. I love all the pretty surfaces and finishes. I know there's a lot more to design at the beginning of the project, but at the end, I love all the pretty styling and all the goodies that go with that. And I'm a bit more on the opposite side. I like the project management and the renovation yeah. and then a lot of the styling. It's not that I'm not good at. I think I just don't enjoy it as much as you do. Like yeah. you can just see that come out in your work. Well, thank you. And I do. And I've, it has evolved because I do like the project management. I flipped a couple of houses. So uh, with a partner and it, you know, you really have to get into every single part of that and with clients as well, um, holding their hand through the whole process. And you know that, right. It is, it is plan, 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 vision, plan, and then execute. So, um, but for me, I've really kind of evolved into this end styling. I love florals. I love texture. I love natural um, elements. I love fabric. Um, that's what makes me happy and gets me excited. And do you find that that's why a lot of your clients hire you is to get that aesthetic as well? Or is it really, uh, a, you know, a little bit of a journey to find out what their style is as well? That And that's a big one. I think for me, um, overall, I, my goal as walking into a client's home is this shouldn't be scary. It needs to be fun and relaxed. And, and they're nervous. They're always mm -hmm. nervous. If they've taken the step to hire an interior designer, then, then they're a little worried that they're not going to get their aesthetic. Um, so my big thing is find out who they are, how they live in their home, what their lifestyle is. And yes, I love white and bright and light, but maybe they don't. So I have to adjust and, and work with that as well. But I think for them, um, if they probably hired me, they know what I like, what is my natural uh, style. Mm -hmm. And if they appeal to that, then that's probably why they've given me a call. And I think that's a good question because how can they live in an interior like what you have presented? If someone has dogs and kids, is the white aesthetic realistic? What are some tricks to kind of make that work with your daily life? Yeah, I have kids and dogs um, right now, just one, and, my, and I'm empty nester right now too, so no kids at home, but I've been through the whole gamut. And for me, it's what you can live with. And I'll tell you, 
you know, Instagram, we're going back to that. There's a reality and then there's what is um, it lo looks like in the pretty pictures of Instagram. I have slip covers. That's how I manage my life. Um, I can throw things in the wash, um, bleach things out. Oxyclean is my friend. Um, and I'm okay with that. So if I have dog prints on my sofa, I can live with that because I know I can wash it. But if you're investing in a sofa that you can't wash, then probably white is not your thing. And, like, and, and I really have to be realistic. So there is form over function in everything that we think about. And again, that goes back to the, um, the life style and how people live in their homes. And I, most of my clients are not white and bright, but they like the light aesthetic. So how do we incorporate that into the look? Well, and I love, I believe it was on your Facebook page, you described it as barefoot luxury. That's exactly what it is. Being comfortable and cozy, you can live in the space, but having a luxurious feel to it still. Exactly. I mean, we live on an island. Um, I, I am, I'm in jeans and bare feet every day. I don't, I, I don't do fancy. So um, I think barefoot luxury really encompasses what we are here on Vancouver Island. We're near the water. We are in nature where you want to be able to walk out onto your patio and back into your house and feel comfortable uh, feet up on the sofa, feet up on the, on the coffee table kind of lifestyle. That's, that's what it, I love. That's what I um, encompass in my life. And for our listeners and viewers, I know you on a personal level in the community as a designer and such, but a lot of people will have just known you from your Instagram account. Um, it's so much more than that. How has your business evolved into that? Because you didn't start on Instagram. No, uh, Instagram was just, um, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years with my business. Um, and Instagram was just something where, because I love, I, I like the platform of that social media uh, because of the pretty pictures and it seemed like a fun, happy place to be. And so I can only choose one because I don't have the bandwidth for all mm -hmm. of them. So I started there, but really had, it has evolved into sharing a little bit more of my personal life, which is not really what I started out, but, but I enjoy um, it like inspiring. So again, and it has helped my business in the sense that people get to see a little bit of the inside workings of how things go. And I do share that a lot on my stories, you know, some projects and things like that. So I think that has helped my business, but it's also just allowed me to share another aspect of what I do and what I love. Absolutely. And also introducing some new aspects to it, like products. You just launched yes. a new product line. Yes. So again, um, I have a, a business partner, Leslie Deanshaw, and we, we flipped the houses together. So that was kind of the starting point of going, okay, this, you know, we love the nice things in the house. What do we want? We've traveled um, extensively together uh, as well, all over Europe. And I think we, we really had some good conversations over a glass of wine of what we love. And we love linen and we love um, natural textures and we love, um, just that vibe of old world Europe, um, slow living. So we wanted to bring that here. And uh, yeah, a product launched just this weekend, uh, TLC at home, there's my plug. Um, and we do jute market bags, linen aprons, linen pillow, linen, just really natural, uh, small batch, handcrafted locally if we can, sourced goods. Which I think really appeals to the aesthetics as well just sort of the small batch in itself, even it's something unique and special that everybody can be a part of now. And, and it is really something that people are looking for. They're not, you know, uh, everybody does the big store, big box shopping, and we get that we all have to do that. But if we can support local, if we can port some, support something that is a little bit more unique, um, I find people are really interested in that. And that goes right back to that slow living kind of style where you, you know where your product came from and you know who made it. And, and I love that. Absolutely. One thing that I love about your aesthetic as well is that you add a lot of personality to it, whether it's little <laughs> sayings here and there or just fun elements. It's not stuffy. It's very livable. Thank you. That's, that's a compliment for me. And that's a goal of mine is that, yeah, again, going back to the Instagram versus reality, my house is a mess a lot most of the time yeah you just <laughs> so kind of have to laugh are, about it right yeah it is it's real and and I post a, a picture of something that's not messy but I want to make sure that people are aware that and don't play the comparison game that is so prevalent in social media is because real world we have families we have kids we have messes we have life we have work all mm -hmm. the time 
So yeah, my house isn't tidy and beautiful. But that's a picture that I've curated and I choose to do that, but the rest of it is can be messy. And then that, that's just real. I feel like that's a big part of this whole thing is just being authentically me and real. Um, and, and I am an introvert, but this platform appears to work for me in the sense that I can focus not in big groups immediately, but I can get my word out there and get my my authentic self out there. And you've really created a community within the Instagram as well. A lot of the photos that you share are promoting other people and followers. Mm-hmm. And I just love seeing what you love as well. And and I love that too, because it is a really unique community. I was very surprised by that. I didn't understand what ever, there is. Um, all these social media platforms have different communities, lifestyle, food, um, fashion, and home decor. When I jumped into this home decor niche, I didn't know it was even there. But the people that I have met along the way, um, incredible supportive uh, women and men. Um, some, I've met a few really great design men designers um, and they are there to cheerlead you on. And that's what I want to give back as well and, and let them grow because some of them are doing this as a business, a full-time business. And we really want to promote that. If, but I, it's only stuff that I really truly love too. I need to be authentic in that. I'm not promoting something that I haven't really thought about and really love. And I think really, like you said, helping each other and silencing all the negativity because there's so much on social media. And I'm sure you get some of that as well. But I love watching all of your content and just feeling uplifted by it. Thank you. Um, That that again was part of, you know, I, I don't write a plan out for this, but, but social media, it is planned. You do, it's a lot of work um, for no pay. <laughs> so I think it's really important that you have a goal of what you're projecting. Otherwise, if it's not fun, why spend all that time doing that? But if I'm not getting, um, yeah, the joy out of it and also um, in, encouraging others that, that I have no room for the negative thing, the negative comments. I don't get it. And also the comparison game. We just have to make sure that people are aware. This is my life that I've chosen to share, but everybody's looks different. And there's always a story behind everybody else's things. So what you see in these pictures isn't always true. And I really want to get that across that that's not, that's not the whole picture. And just going with grace with everybody's what they've what they've got going on well and talking about one of the projects that you have on your instagram site is the um the renovation of the cottage so let's talk about that for a second so that was pretty much an entire gut so we saw the ugly before in between and then this beautiful amazing product so walk us through that a little bit what was that like That was um, an adventure and it kind of grew into more of a gut than we originally planned. 1954, 1952 um, cottage um, near uh, Shelburne uh, hillside area. And, um, but it had good bones and that's that as a designer, you go, okay, it's got good bones. We can keep it small. We didn't, we weren't going big, um, but we needed to create more bedrooms, more bathrooms, things like that. So as we evolved through that, um, we were able to create a floor plan that really worked for a family. So we went from very small two bedroom, one bath to a three bedroom, two bath uh, with an open concept kitchen living room. So in a really small 1200 square foot cottage um, it really came together and for me um, I was lucky enough to have a partner that allowed me to kind of bring in my aesthetic to that so it was a it turned into a bright white cottage yeah (laughs) and you were able to do a lot of DIY projects within Mm -hmm. that as well as content yeah and that's a big part of what I'm embracing and loving I'm learning my husband's very handy and he's got all the tools but he's always done it well now I realized in the course of of watching videos, watching YouTube, I can do it too. I, I don't have to hire somebody to do a wall treatment, to do a, a grid wall or a, you know, board and batten anything or painting or building, you know, we built a, an entry bench and he, he helps and he guides, but you know what, I've, I've learned to, to use the tools. And that's been really, really rewarding for me, especially even as a designer where we always have trades doing all this stuff. And so I'm incorporating that a little bit in at home as well, doing some of our some of our own work, we're building a window seat um, here and things like that, board and batten, adding details that you might not be able to do otherwise. And I love that young people um, and women especially are picking up tools. I just adore it. And they, they're watching the tutorials and they're learning how to do it on a budget. And I think it's fabulous. So there's the age old debate. Is 
doing the renovation back to the studs and like that, that's a lot more work than say just plowing it down and starting yeah. fresh. Is yeah. it worth it cost wise in the long run or it's a lot more work, but definitely a lot more work. And to be honest, um, sometimes it's, it's less, well, as you say, it's less expensive to blow it down and start again. I, Leslie and I were both into preserving um, and fixing and keeping communities intact. Um, the neighborhood that we did that little flip in was thrilled that we didn't blow it down and yeah. do a two story big giant house. Um, for us, it was taking care of the community um, and making it a really nice product to give back to that. And I think the buyer was really buying a lifestyle as well. I mean, they yeah. walk into the space and they just want to see themselves there. Did they yeah. buy the furniture and stuff with it or they, you know, it was staged. So we, I, that was the nice part of that is that I was able to stage it um, with, you know, things that I would love for somebody to see in that space that really fit that space. So um, it was a woman that bought the house and she said when she walked in that she said, this is my house. I feel at home. And for me, that's the biggest compliment you can get when you walk in and go, oh, because that is something we all need to realize is what feels good is, for you is probably the right space for you. And I think that's uh, just sort of pivoting to staging for a second. That's sort of mm -hmm. the ultimate goal for staging as well. Yeah. Um, Cause I know there's a lot of debate about that too with the hot yeah. market and all of that, but I think really kind of creating that experience that people want this to be their lifestyle. A hundred percent. And that, that is whether, you know, it's just even like art and the layers. So you don't have to have new and like, mm -hmm brand new uh, um, rented furniture that's always a bonus if you can do that but just creating livable spaces that you walk in feel good mm -hmm. and that's so important so that's all about editing it's all about organizing it's all about getting uh, making it a little bit less less is more for trying to sell but also for living I feel like we live in a world with a lot of stuff um, so editing is always something that I say okay something new comes in something has to go out so that we don't grow our stuff. Um, too much stuff doesn't feel good to anyone. And I think that's a great place to start for decorating too, because a lot of times I'll have my initial meeting with the client and they just don't even know where to start. Well, you have a lot more stuff than is in this magazine photo. Yeah. So let's yeah. edit it down and decide what you really need. And I don't want to say Maria yeah. Kondo, um, but really deciding what should stay in the space and what should go. And, and I, even getting back to that is what, what things here do bring you joy to mm -hmm. use her term. Um, because I think when we start to really look and dig into that, not everything that we have brings us joy or is useful or, mm -hmm. you know, but if we can pare it down, so I'm not an organizer by trade, but we bring a lot of that in to our job all Absolutely. the time. Um, and lots of times, yeah, people can, don't have the budget for new furniture, but what can we do to make the old stuff look better, feel better? So again, bringing joy with an older or an antique piece even and bringing that, incorporating that into a new design. And I love that. Um, you've also done a lot of projects where maybe it's just um, adding a treatment to a wall to add a bit more texture and feature, something that yeah. doesn't have to cost a lot of money and it's not a big renovation, yeah. but it does change the entire aesthetics of the space. A hundred percent. Right now, lots, we see lots. And again, Pinterest, Instagram, um, board and batten wall treatments. Those are, it's MDF uh, trim work that you can nail on a wall and paint. It costs very little, but you get huge amount of texture um, and a, a really fun look. It doesn't have to be bold and bright, but it can be if you want it, if, if you want that to be your feature. So doing a lot of that uh, wallpaper is huge. Um, and again, peel and stick wallpaper brilliant nowadays yep. so you're not committed forever so uh things like that can change the look and feel of a space dramatically pillows art keep your new your layers um your big stuff neutral and the big pieces of furniture neutral everything and then bring in your color uh with pillows and art and a rug or a throw things like that that you can do that but texture is king in my world so layers of texture is really I feel like what brings um, a whole space together I agree and especially with the light aesthetic it's sort of what separates the sterile white with the cozy textured neutrals yeah yeah and I think um the the neutrals are so popular again now they've been it's classic so it's always yeah. been in style but I think even more so now because people need calm and they need um they just need quiet in their world. We're so busy and we're so connected with everything. I think their home 
needs to feel uh, like an oasis. And that's where the neutrals come in. It makes, it's a really calm feeling when you walk into a space. And, and that, I think home is the mo most important place, especially these days. Uh, this past year, if we learn nothing else, that's what we've learned, that home is where we need to to be the most comfortable. And I think um, where we live, that's why the industry is absolutely booming right now. I mean, trying to get a contractor or any of the trades yeah. is almost impossible because people realize how important it is to have an amazing space to come home to. Yeah, and they're gonna use a little bit of that money that they've saved not traveling or what have you. And they say, what's, the ne what's important? Oh yeah, we're here 24 seven working, living, um, going to school 24 seven. And it's really something that I've noticed. I mean, we're busy everybody's busy um but i think that's not going to change i think we have learned that that's really important and that's something we need to prioritize i agree um well we don't have a lot of time left so i'd love you to mm -hmm. give us a little tease as to some of the products that you guys are bringing out or what are your favorites that you're seeing coming forward in in the store or in yeah. um yeah in yeah. your store so in the store. So we have, um, well, hopefully we're going to have some new fun market bag colors. So that's kind of fun coming in. I just got a delivery today of some more wood goods. So that's fun. I will share that. Uh, we have pillows coming because we all love pillows. So more pillows coming on the way. Um, and yeah, just keeping it pretty curated, small, but um, still feeling like lots of texture, lots of good cozy vibes. And again, we're going to be doing, um, I think, a Mother's Day um, gift bag for, you know, dads and kids. If they want to jump in and, and do a gift for Mother's Day, we'll be doing a little um, market bag full of goodies for that as well. You guys really make it easy because you can layer a lot of your products, pull them together, and they all seem to work really well. Yeah, a nice gift. I think I always think if I would like to receive that, then I think we're on the right track. Yeah, absolutely. I, I look around and go, yeah, I would like that. So, <laughs> and so, where can we find you? What's your Instagram handle? So my um, business Instagram is Remarkable Modern Cottage. Um, my uh, shop is at TLC at Home One, and uh, website for my business is RemarkableInteriors.ca. Thank you so much for sharing everything with us today, Tracy. Thank you for having me, Amy. You made it easy. <laughs> <laughs>